Welcome football fans to another edition of JPL in 30, the highlight show for the Jamaica Premier League. Match week 8 is already upon us and the teams continue to jostle for early ascendancy in the nation's top football competition. Our weekend fixtures get things going as we kick off from the Jackson Sports Complex for our opening match of Sunday's doubleheader with St. Anne-based Lime Hall Academy welcoming Malines United. George Davis picks up the highlights. The starting eleven of Peter Harrison in goal for Malines United, Johnny Flemings, Enrique Gordon, Sergini Frankson, Dijon Grant, Jeremy Nelson saw him yesterday at Caymanus Spark, Jason Wright, Javon Brown, Daniel Hardy, Rashawn Livingston and Taraj Andrews for head coach Donald Stewart. Yeah, and they'll be playing a 4-2-3-1 system. I was about to ask you if Jamie Nelson was as dapper as you are, but it's very difficult to get close to you as I saw you in yesterday, George. But yeah, this Malines team will want to be dapper in their performance. All right, the Lime Hall team now. Eye-catching colours. In goal, they have Jaheim Williams. Damani Sewell is the captain. Carlos Campbell, the hard-working number 10. Tajay Anderson and Sajay Anderson. Kevin Graham, the rock at the heart of defense. Shaquille Kane, Ronaldo Hansen. Javon Ellis, Michael Edwards, the Rastaman on the right flank. And Latroy Leng bringing his calm presence uh, to the back line for Lime Hall and their head coach, Vanny Clark. Today, Dwight, he told you, only his second day on the job. So we got underway. Gordon finding Livingston. The cross comes in. And Jason Wright sliced it badly, but he was being closed down by Latroy Ling. Then Frankson beat to it by Hansen. And look at Ling. This was the game's best chance. Switches it to the left foot and then a wild slash. Hansen again. And it wasn't a shot, it wasn't a pass, it was something in between. Brown with the cross in. And then watch Johnny Flemings. A wicked volley. But just couldn't get it down in time. Livingston found Nelson. Who found the right. Gordon away from Graham. But he was off balance when he applied the left footed finish. Brown was on target with the free kick but not much power. And then this free kick from distance. Didn't beat the goalkeeper. Livingston tried to make something out of nothing at all from that free kick. And then here was Dennis. He's going to work the shooting angle for himself, Dennis. And it whistles by the left upright. And at the end, Kessler Addison, the referee, having no need to write down a goal scorer on his match card. The match stats. There were 13 shots overall, 10 by Malines United. Four shots on target, 21 fouls, 13 committed by, Mal by Lime Hall, and Lime Hall had 52% possession. Three yellow cards, all three to Lime Hall players. Our man of the match, Kevin Graham, is downstairs with Dwight Jeremiah. Uh, Graham, another sturdy performance from you at the back. We saw you against Cavalier. You walked away just with a point. You scored and also defended well in that game. Another sturdy performance, but not getting the goals from your team. Well, uh... Coming into this game today, um, we was really on a positive note um, in between the games that we played before. But um, the mindset for this week was like to keep whatever we come at the field with. So, you know, we didn't get the end result today, which was supposed to be a win. But, you know, we secure what we came here with. So we have to just move on with this positive result. Not our three points, but this is a result that we can surely move forward with. Stuart stepping into our shot here in terms of the game. Tell me what you make of this encounter today or your team performance. Well, I think um, not just the performance, but the characteristic that display within the game of, of, of the game with my team was excellent. I mean, you're still uh, at the bottom of the table with this point. Um, what else have you seen from the team today to suggest that you can get wins because you have to score goals? We see we're making that, that, that effort to be disciplined tactically. And also um, trying to get other persons involved in a, um, in a scoring opportunity. We're creating numbers up in, up in the defensive, in our final third, which is the team defensive third. And that's good for us. Coach Clark, your team didn't get the win at home today. Disappointed in the results? Yes and no. Uh, I wanted to see a reaction. And I think I got a reaction. 
wanted to see the makings of a unit rather than individuals. I think, by and large, we saw some of that. What it does is speaks to the magnum, the magnitude of this of this task. So, Malines Nil Lime Hall Community Club Nil. So, home side Lime Hall stem back to back losses with a point, while Malines United pick up their third point of the new season. We jump into our first break here on JPL in 30. Stay with us as we feature leaders Mount Pleasant on the other side of the break. Welcome back to JPL in 30. The second match of Sunday's doubleheader saw leaders Mount Pleasant Academy hunting their seventh straight win to start the new campaign when they face perennial contenders Waterhouse FC. Let's pick up the full match highlights. Mount Pleasant will have Shaquan Davis in goal, Sule Makala, that versatile player in the back line, Fitzroy Cummings, Jamoy Topi, Odin Murray, Kimoni Bailey, Ramon Howell, Marlon Allen, Romeo Guthrie, Demaria Phillips, where is number 10 in these parts? And Devontae Campbell, the outstanding winger, the lock picker supreme, the defense puller in chief, will play on the flanks for Theodore Tapper Whitmore. Yeah, and any team coming here to play Mount Pleasant, uh, the likes of Devontae Campbell and Kimoni Bailey. Kimoni Bailey are two players that they're going to have to deal with and nullify as best as possible. For Waterhouse, Kimara Foster in goal. Nicoy Christian, formerly of Don Beholy, well, formerly of so many teams, Andre Fletcher, Kenley Deacon, Elvis Wilson, Denardo Thomas, Navarda Blair, Andre Smith, Keithy Simpson, the veteran, Jermaine Morgan, and Damian Bins for coach Marcel Gale. Well, you keep an eye on the left and right back here because their hands are going to be full because I just mentioned Kimoni Bailey and Devontae Campbell. But they'll be terrorizing any right or full back, left backs that are on the opposing team. Full-time highlights now. And ball fired in first time. Denardo Thomas bringing out the acrobatics. Off target. Campbell into Marlon Allen. Nifty footwork from the former Arnett guards. Man maneuvering the ball this way and that. And his shot just high with him off balance. Then Elvis Wilson strode from the back line to drive that forward. Campbell's corner cleared. Topi with the header back and Sule McCullough with the flick. That didn't find the target. Howell. McCullough's cross. None of the Mount Pleasant forwards gambled. And then this back heel from Guthrie into the path of Chung. Didn't get it on the shot. Didn't catch it cleanly. Christian. Ball into the path of Thomas who brought it down. And he went for the shot. Morgan couldn't get on the end of it. Another pass to Thomas in space and he shanks it because the ball bubbled and hit his shin as he went to shoot. Nicole Christian again, the architect. Devontae Campbell changing passes with James. And Campbell plays it to the back stick where Merrick with the flying header. It was difficult for him because there was a man in his line of sight on the post. And then this big moment, James, the Trinidadian, runs by Keita Simpson, goes down. Keita Simpson stretching into the tackle. Referee says penalty. The Waterhouse boys say no. The Mount Pleasant fans happy. They felt this was the moment for their team to go 1-0 up. But as I said, a conference between referee and assistant. And Alexi Perry changes his mind. This is the best angle of the incident. No contact made by Keita Simpson on Nathaniel James. We continue. Javain Brand. Came off the bench, shot from distance, turned away by Shaquan Davis. And Alexi Perry saw enough about 95 minutes in. Waterhouse, there were 18 shots, nine apiece, one on target for Waterhouse. There were 26 fouls, 16 committed by Mount Pleasant, six yellow cards, three apiece. And Mount Pleasant had 62% possession. Our man of the match is Kenley Deacon, and he is with Dwight Jeremiah. Deacon, a.k.a. Rockers, yeah. had a good game today. Um, had the likes of Kimani uh, Campbell to deal with. 
and, and sometimes they will switch around with Bailey coming across. Yes. Tough game for you. How did you manage to deal with them today? It was a tough one, you know. It was a very tough one as you know, come up against a team that is undefeated from the competition as start, which we go we go three game loses. I wasn't in the squad. I was having some family issues. I was overseas. Come in later, put in the work and the hard work pays off. My first game. Let's start with your team's performance today. What did you set out to do and did you accomplish that? I mean, tactical masterclass today. I mean, you know, it was a tactics um, nutrition today. Um, you know, we know that more present was going to come out. We, we were going to press us. And, and we, we, we believe um, so that, you know, we, we weren't giving up the midfield today. And I think that um, carries us by line today. But I mean, credit, I mean, some young players in the squad today. I mean, the first game. Even the man I matched today, um, Kenley, today was his first game back. Um, German Morgan, first Premier League start. Um, 19 years old. I mean, you know, as a as a gallant performance today. I mean, we get a chance in in in, in, in the final tour. We, we should have put it away, but such is the game. Uh, you know, we take half of them come again. Uh, Marcel Gale felt that he did one over you today in terms of his tactics. Got it spot on, he said, and a point is what he was pleased with in this game. What about your team and their performance? How do you feel about that? Well, I think um, it wasn't a, a performance that we expected this afternoon. I think the game was. 50 50. I think this afternoon we didn't run enough risks in terms of getting people forward because I think the Waterhouse team they, they sit back and were waiting on us to make a mistake. And basically, I, I, I thought that what we were trying to do. So I think we never, all in all, we never committed players. So Waterhouse went to St. Anne and did the unthinkable by holding leaders Mount Pleasant to a draw. Much more action still to come as we go to another break. Stay with us. Welcome back to JPL in 30. We are back in the capital city of Kingston for our Monday doubleheader and we get the ball rolling with the high riding Arnett Gardens looking to secure a hat trick of wins when they square off with Clarendon's Beer United. Donald Oliver takes us through the full match highlights. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Arnett Gardens this afternoon. Eric Edwards between the sticks. Of course, you know that they have to make a, a lot of changes based on the fact that they got three records in their last game uh, out. Uh, Philander Wing on the left side of the defense. Shanoi Evans slotting in at the right side of the defense. Rashawn Amos and Joel Cunningham, the back pairing in the middle of the park. Marlon Martin. Roshane Thompson comes in there as well alongside Jaheen Thomas on the left. Up front, Kimani Arboin, of course, with four goals to his name. Shea Smith on the right. And down the middle is Warner Brown with two goals to his name. Yeah, very lucky for Arnett that they have a lot of quality coming off of the bench to replace those players that got the red card. And their coach is recently back in the island from his exploits coaching the women's team as well. So full assortment in some aspects for Arnett Gardens. As we take a look at uh, the starting lineup for Veer United, Roger Williams, of course, between the sticks. They have a back four of Jay Nanderson, who's getting his second start at left back. Or, or rather Matt Lutford who's getting his second start in the uh, as one of the centre-back pairings alongside Donovan Clark and Alwyn Strawn. Uh, Javier Brown in the middle of the park of course is the captain with three goals to his name. So Jay Graham alongside him. Aldane Wheatle will start for the first time, the 20-year-old, uh, the former Central High uh, student and up front, the 16-year-old Dustin Cohen on the left, Ricardo Dennis on the right, Kamar Beckford, Kamar Bushy Beckford formerly of Waterhouse down the middle. As we take a look at the highlights in this one, Arboin at the near post, playing it inside to Warner Brown, who couldn't quite redirect the header. Came off his shoulder, didn't have a lot of pace. The junglists were creating so many chances, and then they converted one. Lovely finish there. Thompson putting that one across the line. Shea Smith did really well and Rashane Thompson opening his account this season and the bench was ecstatic. Ball play through to Warner Brown and that was a wonderful save by Roger Williams. Brown trying to place it through his legs. Didn't quite work out for him. 
then an opportunity for Dennis and he blasted that one high Ricardo Tennis lacking goal scoring form hurting him as well and then the opportunity for Veer and uh, again just couldn't reach and also this attempt Roger Williams with a magnificent save you know moving to his left getting a strong hand on it and then not clear properly Williams again trying to make the clearance and couldn't he came off the bar and Jaheim Thomas with the finish Yep. The defense has sixes and sevens there. And uh, Arnett Gardens doing the business, making them pay. And that was that as far as this was concerned. Arnett coming out with the victory. Anagans with 10 shots, 5 of which were on target. Beer United with 3, 1 on target. A physical game as well with Beer United committing 15 fouls. 3 more than Anik Gardens. And uh, Beer had more yellow cards as well. And uh, Anik Gardens, look at the corner kicks. 12 to 2 in favour of the junglists. And the possession in favour of the junglists as well at 54%. I'm here with today's man of the match, Jaim Thomas. You got a goal today. You were heavily involved in the first goal also. Describe your performance for us. Well, for me, it's a pretty fair performance for me. I think I could do a bit more in terms of penetrated passes and scoring some more goals in the first half. Coach Douglas, your attack just didn't get going today. Yeah, we never got off the mark today in terms of attack. And that's uh, the goal that we conceded. We were just getting into the game. Loves. Got caught on the um, uh, transition and really unfortunate at that time during the game. Coach, I'm sure, as I mentioned, you had a, couple, a busy couple of days, but you, you've topped it off with a win tonight. I'm sure you're very happy. Yeah, very happy with the way we executed tonight. Um, table is really tight between second and, and, and six, and it was important that we, we get the three points today to kind of, you know, push us up the table a little bit, um, knowing that especially Tivoli playing and if they win, they're right behind us. So it, it was important for us to get the three points tonight. So Arnett Gardens make it three straight wins to continue their surge up the table, while Veer United suffer their third loss of the season. The second match of the doubleheader on Monday saw a humdinger between Tivoli Gardens and Treasure Beach FC. Here is Donald Oliver once again. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for uh, Tivoli Gardens. Nicholas Clark between the sticks. Uh, Odin Pennycook, Barrington Price, Richard Brown, of course, the back three in the middle of the park, Keno you know, Simpson, Kevin Garnett, Howard Morris, and Alton Lewis. And uh, up front, Nikolai Fuller. Justin Dunn, of course, with six goals to his name this season. And uh, Janiel Ray. As we take a look at the Treasure Beach starting lineup, and uh, Maui Morgan is between the sticks. They do have a back for Romario Bryan, Romario Thompson. Tariq Melvin and Ryan Dwyer in the middle of the park. Jay Jameson, Courton Wright and Shanoi Smith. And up top, Lawrence Lewin on the left, Tavar Thompson on the right, Jamara Cole. With just a goal to his name is the central striker. We're here for the full-time highlights. And there were thrills and spills in this one. That was just wide of the mark, Justin Dunn making everyone aware that he's a danger man Penny Cook's effort deflected and just over the top and Treasure Beach gave what they got as well that effort though wide of the mark and then Ray took that one inside and the goal for Justin Dunn. Ray had a wonderful game today, you know, had the assist. 
for that first goal. Jaray Neal. Or Janil Ray, sorry. And Justin Dunn with his seventh of the season. This match really was exciting. Right from distance over the top. Needed to have been on target. And then this one coming off the bar. Deflected effort. Treasure Beach kept pressing. That effort just over the top. They hung in there, the spectators, all along with them. And then this effort deflected and wide of the mark. And again, it was done in the thick of things for Tivoli Gardens. Then Janil Ray, look at that finish. His first ever goal in the Jamaica Premier League. And uh, really had a wonderful game. Did the youngster. Capped it off with a nice jig at the end. Janil Ray, I'm sure his mom is looking and smiling as well. Opportunity. This time, the comeback was on. Tavar Thompson dismissing Barrington Price there. And then putting that one across the line. Nothing Clark could have done with it. That was his first goal of the campaign. Tavar Thompson, the ever dangerous Tavar Thompson, received a hook from his coach as well. And then an opportunity here. The deflection almost. Well, that could have gone anywhere, could it? And then this shot blocked and then the follow-up producing a fine save from Clark. That was going in. Clark had to dig that one out. And then this, a bit of magic from Romario Smith. Wonderful stuff. They thought they got a point in the 90th minute. Smith getting his first. They were pumped. But one more twist to the tail. Lewis, Alton Lewis getting his first. Stabbing that one home. Right outside the six yard box. Unmarked. And he was there to get the winner for Timothy Gans. And didn't they deserve it in the end? Wow, what a game. Monday Night Football at its very best. Timothy Gardens with 16 shots, six of which were on target. Half of them went in. Treasure Beach with seven shots, five on target. 16 fouls committed by Treasure Beach, eight by Timothy Gardens. And Timothy Gardens had all the corner kicks in this one. And they had the majority of the possession at 64%. What a game. What a game. Man of the match, Alton Lewis. You scored that all-important goal at the death. Just describe your emotions at that moment. First goal for the season. The aim is to score five goals for the season and 12 assists. So start off today was a, was a great, great, great goal. What happened at the end there, coach? Why well, God, no, you can't even explain. Because I come so close, you know, for really get a point. A game like this and get a point, you really set you off on a good feet, you know. But honestly, I really proud of the performance from my players. You know, show that we are not here to give, give, give away any three points. You have to work for it. And, you know, <laughs> it's going to be a long drive heading back to the country tonight. But, you know, we leave, we leave here tonight show that we can play. We leave here tonight show that we can score. We leave here tonight proving that we can keep our, our spot in the league. And that's our main objective for this year. And we are still on that track and we're going to maintain on it. We're going to push forward with all we got. So each game we try to improve on it, you know. As I can see, we don't two goal and we take our time and play and play and play and play and get one, then we get two and it's what it is. Yeah? We have to give respect to the Tivoli team. The coach is my good friend, you know, I really rate this coach, you know. Hold up our love to Jerry boy, but God knows we don't want to hold him tonight. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to hold him tonight, but it's what it is, you know, we're going to push again. Jerry, you get where? <laughs> <laughs> coach Jerome Wade, coach. Your team stole it at the end after looking so comfortable for so much of the game. What, what, what do you think that your team did wrong to even be in that predicament in the first place? Well, first of all, congratulations to the Tibel Gardens team. Well tried. 
um, Treasure Beach. This game should have been dusted from the, from the first half and also in the second half. The amount of chances that we created, it shouldn't even end up this way. Nevertheless, we have to dig deep and we end up being winners. That's how we put a lid on another JPL in 30 on your home of champions on Sportsmax. Tune in next week for another riveting edition.